Hey guys, Golf Nerd here. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Kirkland wedges. Now, I think that this wedge set may be one of the best uh, bargains in all of golf. So, I'm certainly a fan of Kirkland, and I think they've done another really terrific job with this wedge set. Having said that, I don't think they're for everybody, so I'll go through some of the pros and cons that I think I've found over the last two seasons of using these. Uh, I'm also going to make a direct comparison to my gaming sand wedge. So, this is the Kirkland sand wedge that I've got in my hands, and I'm going to compare that to my Callaway Apex sand wedge, uh, which is a club that I just really like. Uh, so I'll do a direct comparison between that, and before we get any further though, I'd like to make just one shout out to everybody that's watching this video. I don't plan on doing a lot of the mainstream club reviews like drivers and whatnot, at least at this stage. Uh, I just can't afford to go out and buy all those individual clubs. But if there are unique clubs that you'd like to see a review on that just aren't getting enough uh, airtime, if you will, on YouTube, uh, leave it a comment down below and let me know if there's a, a, a particular club or item that you'd like to see reviewed, and I'll see if I can uh, add that to the, the slate of videos that I'm going to make. So the next thing I'd like to do is just do a real up-close dive into the looks and review some of the pros and cons that I've found. So, that's what we're going to do next. So the next thing I want to talk about is just the design of this club. So the very first thing that I really, really like about this wedge set is the look at a, peer, or at a dress. This is a very traditional shaped wedge. You know, you see a lot of wedges that have a really high toe um, or they might have a really wide sole. Uh, just there's a lot of different wedge designs. And a lot of those I find to be kind of ugly. I just don't like the look of it. And I really like something that looks very traditional, and that's one of the things I just love about these Kirklands, is they look very, very traditional, uh, almost tight list like. Um, so I really like that. the The next thing I'll point out is there is a slight uh, wear on the leading edge, but it's pretty slight. This is a pretty sharp leading edge for the most part, which is great because if you hit ball and turf, it's going to cut through the turf really well. Uh, it's really easy on the joints as a result, and you'll you'll just take a nice clean divot. The downside is if you're like around a green or something, and you're doing little chip shots, if you catch one a little heavy, it'll dig. So that's one of the definite uh, cons of this club, is that the sharp leading edge can uh, can penalize you very much on a uh, on a fat shot. The next thing I'd like to talk about is just the sole design. It's a fairly wide sole, uh, but it is a wedge and it's going to have some. There is some relief in terms of bounce, um, but what I do really like about the sole is it's narrow enough that you can easily open up this club. Uh, so if you want to hit a flop shot or just add some additional loft to take a little distance off a wedge, these wedges are really, really versatile in that way and I really like how you can just open them up very, very easily and play a, uh, a, a shot that you're trying to hit. So I love that. Um, probably the biggest negative, and I'll zoom in on this, is this branding. I absolutely hate the branding on this. I don't care that it's a Kirkland Club, I really don't. It's just, in my opinion, this is a tool. And whatever tool gives me the, the most success out on the golf course, that's what I want to use. But I really wish they would do something about the Kirkland signature branding that they have here on the club. I just think it's ugly. Uh, so, you know, I joke about it when I'm playing with friends and I pull out a Kirkland wedge, you know, just to make light of it. So it's not really something that, that bothers me. But I think they'd just be so much better off if they just made something a little cleaner, you know, maybe not as garish. You know, some black font, you know, just something clean. Um, so anyway, I think that's the biggest negative. The uh, other concern that you have to have with these particular clubs is, well, one, they're very limited. You don't get a lot of choices, right? You get your steel shaft. Um, there's no choice on that. There's no choice on lofts or bounce. So you're just getting a stock offering. So that's another limitation. So let's talk about the lofts on the clubs for a minute. So it comes as a set of three wedges, like I said, a gap wedge, a sand wedge, and a lob wedge. The gap wedge is 52 degrees, the sand wedge is 56 degrees, and the lob wedge is 60 degrees. And 
I don't know if you can bend these. They're certainly a forged or a, a cast club. You might be able to bend them a little, but um, you know maybe one degree at most. But obviously, anytime you're trying to bend something cast, you are playing a little bit with fire. So you have to be concerned about that. Um, ultimately, it's the lofts of these clubs and their swing weight, that combination, that took out the gap wedge and the sand wedge out of my bag, uh, even though I like the clubs quite a bit, um, simply because the gapping became too big between my pitching wedge, which I believe is a 45 degree, um, and the gap wedge at 52, that seven degree gap was just too much. So now my setup is I have the Kirkwood lob wedge as the, uh, the, the highest lofted club in my bag. And then I go to a 50 degree gap wedge and a 55 degree uh, sand wedge. And both of those are those Callaway apex wedges that I mentioned earlier. Um, so it just works out for me in terms of gapping more so than anything else. And, um, that's what that's what helps me to try to get my best opportunities to score and that's the only reason I went that way so the combination of the lofts and the swing weights so that really will determine how successful it's going to be in terms of how does it fit within your bag um, but again very very high value items you know hundred eighty dollars for a set of three wedges and the the, the data and the performance I'm going to show you here shortly uh, is going to show you just firsthand uh, what an impressive performance it is. So there's really not a lot to complain about. It's really just a matter of do you like the shaft and do the does the gapping fit within the gapping that you need for your particular setup. So now let's review some swings and uh, I'll talk through the data uh, after we get through watching all the, the swings of the two wedges. So now we've got the uh, results from the head-to-head -head comparison of the Kirkland and Callaway sand wedges. Uh, obviously there's a degree of loft difference here, but as you can see the carry is basically exactly the same. I rounded these numbers, but it, they're both right at 73 yards. Uh, the backspin is actually a little bit higher for the Callaway, but a lot of that is just going to come from the quality of the strike. Uh, if you really want to put a lot of spin on your wedges, you need to have a, a pretty significant angle of attack, negative angle of attack. And uh, as you can see on the offline, the, uh, the Callaway shots were going a little bit right and the Kirklands were going a little bit left. Uh, that kind of club face deviation could also uh, account for why we're seeing the difference in the backspin number. The peak height, both 17 yards, descent angle, both at 47 degrees. And uh, when you're a short hitter like me, you need to get close with wedges and look like I, I got pretty decent today with an offline that was pretty close, less than a yard. So uh, 
you know, happy about that as a result. But really what it just shows is that these two wedges compare very similarly. Uh, what you can't necessarily tell from the video is the, uh, the sound and feel, um, the, uh, the sound is very similar and the feel is very similar, quite honestly. So, you know, Kirkland's made a really nice product since it's a cast wedge and it's competing favorably with a forged Callaway apex. So in that respect, it's, uh, it's really holding its own. So really just another testament to, uh, the, the quality of the Kirkland product and at that $180 mark for three wedges, it's just quite a bargain. Okay, guys, as you can see, the, the data is really positive on these Kirkland wedges. It, it was very similar to the performance I was getting out of the, uh, the Callaway Apex. Um, I do think that I had to modulate my swing a little bit for that target. Uh, I can easily swing my Callaway Apex as it's got a graphite shaft in it. Uh, I can swing that a little faster so I can go after it a little bit more if I need, if I'm stuck between distances kind of thing. I can't do that as much with these steel shafted clubs and with the additional swing weight of this head. Uh, so it does limit me a little bit in terms of flexibility of what I'm trying to accomplish when I'm on the course. Uh, but the, the data and the results are very similar in terms of sound and feel. Uh, I think they're also very similar and that's, you know, that's a pretty awesome comment because that Callaway uh, Apex, that's a forged wedge. Uh, it's a fantastic feeling club. And the, uh, the, the feel off these Kirkland wedges is really, really good. They're not clicky. Um, they feel good. Uh, they are a cast club, but, you know, they, they just they feel great. So there's no issues there. Um, it could be that a lot of wedge feel just comes from the fact that there's just so much loft. You're just not getting that much compression on the ball. It's more of a glancing blow. So, I mean, that, that could play a part of it as well. But there's certainly, for me, no complaints in terms of how these wedges feel. Um, like I said before, I don't like the look on the back, but everything else about this club aesthetically, I like a lot. Uh, I think it looks terrific. Uh, so no worries there for me. I love the cost. Uh, there's just a lot of positives about this club. It really just comes down to, if, in my opinion, does it fit your swing? Does it fit the gapping in your set? Now, the nice thing about Costco is you go out and you buy a set of these wedges and you try them out and you go, those aren't for me. That's not going to work for my game. Well, they have a great return policy too, so you're not out anything. You can just take them back and Costco will gladly refund your money. And it's not like I'm getting a cut of Costco's money. I, I'm not trying to plug their product. I just happen to think that this is a really great value and it's a really great uh, performing club if you can get over maybe this aesthetic part on the back of the club. But other than that, if it fits you, Man, this is a great, great value. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button. Please like and subscribe. Love to have you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I get back to everybody. And please remember, I'm looking for suggestions for unique clubs that you'd like to see a review on. I don't care what kind of club it is. I'd love to take a look at stuff if there's some desire for a review out there. So please leave that in your comments as well. I'd love to hear uh, some feedback on, on what you guys are looking for in terms of reviews. Well, that's it for the golf nerd. Hit them long and straight, and I'll see you next time.